Well then, let's check out Twitter first. After all, I have to work on a next video for my channel. What is this? Oh, that's awesome! I always wanted to be part of the coalition. Now I have to pour my best work at it. But what then should I show you first for the coalition? Mm. I don't know. Maybe an update for Adam and Papers? Pure Adam and Seed Papers? What can it be? Hey, bro. Why are you eating a banana? You are allergic to those. When are you gonna make a turkey colis? Well, I don't want to do that really, but. I'm gonna kill for you. Fuck on a turkey with my turkey colis. Okay, fine, fine, fine. If that's what you want, I'll bring that to you, okay? Now, can you please leave so I can work on the video? You better do that, please. Welcome back to the Coalition of Scrubs. I'm your host for today, Jose Luis Gonzalez, also known as From the Deck to the YT. And in today's episode, we have an alternative deck that you can play if you have, uh, you know, the money and the fame and the girls and, you know, everything in your life. So, a house. Um, today, we're going to play Eldritch, but we're going to take another motor that was very popular. A few years back 2017 2018 and we are going to play around with a gimmicky thing that Eldritch has that this motor can abuse this motor of course I am talking about you know your favorite motor true Draco now what is exactly the synergy between true Draco and Eldritch well that's easy to answer Eldritch loves to send their spells and traps to the graveyard. What is the true Draco's favorite gimmick? To tribute continuous spells and traps. Before we continue, I want you to subscribe to this channel for more amazing content and uh, also give a follow to all of the coalition members. You know their names, I, it's going to be down below, don't worry about it. And also you can follow the coalition on Twitter and all of their members. So now let's get right into business. Here it is the deck list, guys. Um, pretty simple, pretty standard, you know, three copies of Eldritch, uh, Dynamite and Ignis Hit. Uh, I don't play Maiden, if you want to play Maiden that's fine. Uh, I just didn't see a point of playing Maiden if you can add Ignis and Dynamite uh, by other means and you can draw a lot of in this deck and you can deck in a lot. So. But that's my point, if you want to play it Maiden, it is totally fine. You can replace these three copies of Extravagance uh, with Maidens, of course. Uh, these are not necessary. It is good because, you know, drawing two Pot of Greed is really nice, but um, not necessary. Two copies of Awakening, two copies of White Destiny. Uh, well, you will see that I have a lot of two offs. And my reasoning is that I want a 40 card deck because it has more consistency when I draw, if you understand what I mean. Um, pretty much, basically, is that if I want to play 3 copies of every Eldritch card and every 2 Draco card, um, it's going to be like a 50 card deck and chances of opening the cards that I need are thin or get thinner because uh, I'm playing a bigger deck that if I just play two of everything and do a 40 card deck. That's why you see two copies of Black Awakening, two copies of White Destiny, two copies of 
True Lake of Heritage, Two of True Lake of Phoenix, and Two of Summon Limit, Quaquero, Conquistador, um, Apocalypse, and Golden Land Forever. These are all the two offs that you need. And you will see that this is fine. You will see a lot of these. You may even see them more. So you can play with the ratios of this deck. But for me, this is how it works. Now, what do I play at three in this deck? I play three copies of There Can Be Only One. You may think that it is redundant because you want to resolve your Quaquero and Conquistador. But the thing is, um, with There Can Be Only One, you can stop your opponent more than it can stop you. Because, you know, resolving Quaquero or Conquistador is nice. But maybe your opponent summons something that can't be destroyed by the FX or you know whatever they have in graveyard is not that really important so uh, these two become optional I said you want to see uh, Pickaboo and Summon Limit so yeah it depends on you of course but for me there can be only one is a good card in this deck because it stops your opponent from playing nice Apart from that, what do we have? We have um, one offs. Well, the other three offs are Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine and Curse Eldland. Basically, you want to open Curse Eldland and one True Draco monster. Whatever you have in your hand else is free. You want to activate Eldland, activate its effect, pay 800 at um, any of the Elich, Elixir, Spells or Traps. I think it cannot and Ah, yeah, it can add Golden Land. Perfect. So you can add your Golden Land, uh, Conquistador or Hero. Or you can add your Elich. In this case, you are always going to add uh, Conquistador or Hero. Or even Golden Land forever. And then, you're going to Tribute Curse Eldland to summon either Ignis Heat or Dynamite. That will trigger its effect in graveyard, adding you, or sorry, uh, sending um, Eldritch Golden Lord. And then you can play from there. You added, uh, for example, a Joaquero or a Conquistador. You set it, you set it to the graveyard by Eldritch effect and special summon Eldritch. And on the end phase, set a Scarlet Sanguine, White Destiny. Um, Black Awakening, whatever. One is that interaction with Curse Island and the True Draco monsters, it's perfect for synchronization and you want to resolve this as much as you can. And the one ups apart from Dynamite are Terraforming and Diagram, so basically a two off. Diagram very powerful because not only adds True Draco monsters or um, to Draco spells and traps because it adds two Draco cards in general. But also you can destroy uh, anything that you don't need. For example, a Black Awakening, a White Destiny, um, and a Scarlet Sanguine. Even yeah, you can destroy your own Summon Limit, Takabu, etc. And just go for game. So pretty neat, pretty standard. I really like uh, that diagram in this deck. And the one copy of King's Return. Um, this is for special summoning your Draco from the graveyard, you don't have many of those, so you may want to use it for its second effect to pop a monster of the field. Remember, Heritage and Phoenix pop spells and traps, and Apocalypse and Return pops monsters. So be careful with that and take that in consideration. The extra deck is where it gets interesting. I played the rank 10, rank 11 combo, and I played three of everything because you know, extravagance. So, Gustav Max for Born, Super Dora for Protection, and Juggernaut Live for Attack. Now be careful because if you activate Black Awakening, White Destiny, or Scarlet Sanguine, you cannot special summon anything else that is not a zombie. So you may want to activate those on the end phase of your opponent's turn, except Black Awakening of, of course. And then a special summon your Gustav Max Burn 2000 going to live and attack for game. The other things are Nightmare Unicorn and Nightmare Phoenix. Popping spells and traps, more, and spinning cards are very powerful in this format. So 
And on the side, I play three copies of Winter Cherries and targets that I think you can see a lot. Um, Galatea, Orcus Automaton, Don't Like Wolf, Hulk. I'm sure you are tired of seeing Hulk in every game, so. IP Mascarena, these ones can be um, Kagari or uh, Shizuku, whatever you want from Sky Striker. But yeah, I only play uh, Winter Cherries because in this format it's very nice to just rip your opponent's extra deck and if you fail on um, revealing the correct cards, you can always see what they are playing. So you can see they have an out to your combo deck. So. Well, now we're going to see some replays. First replay against Fluffle, an OTK deck that for some reason went first. I don't understand really why, but whatever. He starts playing Polly into Kraken, Kra Penguin and Chain Activate, adding Patchwork and adding Polymerization and Saber. Saber's coming back, Patchwork for Sight and End Phase. With a set, um, Impermanence, I think it's very niche, but whatever. Awakening is not going to resolve, but it doesn't matter because we are going to kill triggers or add Lich cards. The, he's going to back off for a Saber Tooth, summoning a Lich from the graveyard, Impermanence or Golden Lord, I don't know why. Diagram drawing us one that is Draco Phoenix, really powerful card, setting two, passing back to him. Um, he has verb. That's toy vendor. Toy vendor. We are going to destroy that with conquistador. We don't want him to draw more than one card. We took about the sabers, but he goes into Bert and Aconda, Red Eyes Fusion, Dragon of Red Eyes. Pretty niche, right? Now, because we summon Elish by its own effect, it cannot be destroyed by card effects this turn. So, pretty important to remember that. Now we set here Golden Land forever, but I forget that this one, Dragoon, just can be destroyed by card effects either in general. So, we have to be careful with that. Diagram is a sweet card because we can now pop for Draco Phoenix searching um, through Draco Apocalypse and just cleaning up sabers of the field. White Destiny is better because White Destiny can be Ash, so if he wants to negate, he has to negate with Dragoon. He could yet just resolve it and then burn me for game, but I think he misplayed in that sense. We reduce the attack of Dragoon and we are still in this game. So we add another copy of Ignis Hit and then Tribute uh, Conquistador, then summoning Golden Lord. And just attack and attack. Now, Ruffle outruns of resources, that, so that's why it is important to check our own resources so we don't run out of these. And we are just ready to play. Lady Storm, we are going to negate that with Golden Land Forever. And this is pretty much basically game. White Destiny and Scarlet Sanguine. I forgot I have a tech of on the field, but whatever. Whatever. More misplays and just attack for game because uh, I don't know, I hate my life. Now, what happens when you face your original creation? Here it is a true Draco list on my opponent's hand. So, this is a minus, in my opinion. I don't really want to send uh, Eldland with my own Golden Lord, but whatever. If we have to, we have to. Remember, we are playing an Eldritch deck. He's going to souls. I let that resolve, of course, without. But we ha have to summon our golden lord to be prepared for anything. Souls tries to activate. We are going to golden land forever. That we cannot let our opponent draw two cards. Diagram popping or trying to pop the set one. I say okay, it's fine. Add your spell. Then Heritage is going to draw one. Both of desires. It's a really nice draw. But he doesn't draw anything useful. So back to us, we're going to send our Apocalypse to the graveyard to special summon our Golden Lord. And Apocalypse is going to destroy Magician Souls. Then we're going to manage to search Golden Land forever and Conquistador. 
Battle Face, Punch for 35 and pass on that. Our opponent draws into another copy of Monarchs Erupt. We're going to pop off the diagram because we, he, we cannot let him search. Heritage pop one spell that it's going to be Golden Lord forever and uh, because we don't want to lose uh, Golden Lord we say okay it's fine. Erupt, double erupt, okay no problem. We don't have any effect on the field it's, and the only that we activate is Ignis so it doesn't matter. And we just can attack for game and win. Now we saw through Draco, but what happens when we see Striker? Striker, a very powerful deck, managed to top in non official, non Konami approved um, simulators. So it doesn't matter, but Striker is still a very powerful deck. Now here it comes the interaction summoning in his hit, Corsel, and sending. Conquistador Cyclone is going to pop off one and because I was playing El, um, Duel Links before I forgot that I have a main phase too. It doesn't matter. He would just have Cyclone anyway, but whatever. End phase, we're going to search from Fakero and pass on that. But we have Ignis Hit, we have Conquistador and we have Elixir. Our opponent is going to negate Ignis Hit on for a second time but we are going to pop off the multi roll. Ray, very powerful. Ayate attacks directly and sends afterburners. Gagari for afterburners, afterburners targeting Ignis hit. And we are going to activate uh, Elixir so he cannot destroy Elixir. Now Ignis hit should have been destroyed, but I don't know why it wasn't. Upstart into Area Zero, which must be nice. Searching jamming waves. What he doesn't know is that he's not going to have another turn to stop for game. Again against Striker. Um, you know, when you see Mystic Mind in your opponent's hand and it's, uh, you know, Striker, that's not good news. So we pass on Dynamite and four sets. Cycloning the Kaboom is really fine, it doesn't matter. Searching our. Apocalypse and he activating our series is fine. Golden Lord gets summoned this time. We let that resolve and he gets Widow Anchor from the top. Now uh, Rose into Hayate. And we are going to pop off that with Apocalypse tributing summoning the Ignis hit. We search for the land forever, but we'll face 24, 25. I don't know what is Striker playing now, so I don't know what. And here is when I found out that you cannot make Gusta Max. We're going to negate Mystic Mine with Golden Lamp Forever. It's going to Widow Anchor or Golden Lord. It doesn't matter. We activate Heritage. We Scarlet Sanguine for a second Golden Lord. Halky Fibrax. We're going to Dynamite Knight that and also Conquistador it to pop off. And here is when my opponent surrenders. That's going to be all for this video. I'm going to thank you very much for joining me today and see this amazing non-monkey deck. You have to really think in this deck. And if you want to see more content like that, please give a like to this video. Um, and also in the comments, leave a challenge you want to see on the next video. You know, it can be anything related to deck building. So leave a challenge on the comments and the most voted challenge it's going to be up for my next video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Adios. We don't play good decks, we play bad decks well. Scrubs by choice in this abyss we dwell.